Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play That's One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. On the ZX Spectrum, no uh, no less. Um, the, 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 the ZX Spectrum is an old uh, UK-based PC system. I honestly had not really heard of the, Z the ZX Spectrum much growing up, uh, you know, in Canada. Uh, but I mean, I heard whispers of it and stuff, but, uh, yeah, just never really played it too much for this quest and we don't play it too often. So, uh, this, the Hobbit game is an adventure game. As you can see here, it came out on many different, uh, systems like the Commodore 64 and whatnot, but we're trying it on the good old ZX. And, uh, as you can tell, so it's a graphical adventure game, not as advanced as the Sierra adventure games, which would come later. And then the more, you know, eventually Lucas uh, Arts would make uh, their Monkey Island and uh, Maniac Mansion and all those. But in the early days, you know, think of like Zork. A lot of the early adventure games are purely text. So to have this kind of visualization was actually pretty cool. And fun fact, this would have been considered a 3D game back in the day. And also fun fact, you may look at this and laugh because it just like literally if you type in, so you're in a comfortable tunnel hall there to the east, there's a round green door. So there's a wooden shaft. Gandalf is there. Thorn is there. Um, if you type in look and press enter, it actually draws out a scene with like flood fill effects and uh, basically the old computers couldn't actually hold a picture you know, a JPEG of this screen would be too much memory for them. So they held, you know, really basic information, like draw a line from this coordinate to this coordinate, this coordinate to this coordinate. So it would go and draw all the lines and it would flood fill um, with paint effects. And you may look at that and scoff and say, wow, how primitive. But that is how modern 3D graphics are drawn, folks. It's just a lot more lines and a lot more flood filling, well, and textures and stuff too. But um we look at this and we kind of laugh that it was considered a 3D game uh, at one point in time, but it honestly is the same technology we use now for modern 3D games. Computers can just do this like, you know, a million times a second. Anyway, um, I'm getting like so sidetracked here. The Hobbit. We're going to be adventuring uh, in Hobbit land today. So anyway, um, for those of you who are familiar with Peter Jackson's work, uh, he made some movies based on, you know, an obscure writer, J.R.R. Tolkien, who nobody had ever heard of. His books didn't sell very well. So they made these movies, and they became blockbuster things, and then now people know what hobbits are. Um, and obviously that is the way history went. Um, <laughs> if you're born after the year 2000, then uh, probably you do think that's how things worked. But anyway, we're going to go on a little adventure here today. I have a walkthrough. So we're in a room with Gandalf. Why don't we go ahead and talk to Gandalf and see what he has to say? I do not see Gandalf here. Um, oh, wait, Gandalf went east because I took so long blathering on. Open the chest. Let's see what... Uh, look in chest. Oh, look in chest. Um, talk to Thorin. Thorin says... No. <laughs> what did I ask him? Okay, go east. All right, here we are in the... Where the hobbits live, The not the Vale. The Vale's from Game of Thrones. They live in uh, Hobbit country. What, what the hell do you call it? I'm blanking on the name here. Anyway, you're in a gloomy, empty land. Oh, I thought it would be like in a little uh, valley full of other hobbits. Um... To the west, there is a round green door. Visible exits are east, north, northeast. You see nothing. Thorin enters. Thorin, what are you doing following me, buddy? You talk to Thorin. Okay, nothing comes with that. Go east. Continue on eastward. Now, I have to say, as someone who played a lot of early computer games, and I didn't necessarily play too many adventure games like this. Like I, you know, the first adventure games I really played were like Leisure Suit Larry, Space Quest, Police Quest. Uh, oddly enough, not King's Quest, even though I think that is the most famous of the Quest games. But for me, Leisure Suit Larry, you know, I was a little, a little teenage prepubescent boy. A game with naked ladies, hello, yes. And then Police Quest, you were a cop. Space Quest, you were in space. Those games are cool to me. I just, the fantasy thing, the King's Quest, just didn't get into those. But 
Again, I'm getting super sidetracked. What I mean to say here is that I feel like these graphics actually for like an old text-based Zork style game would have seemed pretty revolutionary. So um, this is kind of cool, actually. Um, so you are in the trolls clearing. Visible exits are southwest, south, north. You see Gandalf. The hideous troll is carrying a large key. The vicious troll. Gandalf goes southeast. Blimey, look at this. Can you cook them? The vicious troll says you can try, but you wouldn't make a mouthful. So let's get the hell out of here. Let's go north. <laughs> we just ran away, I guess. Um, and now we are in a jungle. I guess we get to sort of imagine what we might be seeing, um, you know, as the scene fills in. So a hidden path with trolls' footprints. Uh, to the north, there is a heavy rock door. Visible exits are south. You see nothing. I think Thorin is just in for the ride, man. We're just going to keep waiting. We're supposed to wait until day dawns. I'll just keep waiting. Day dawns. All right, it is daytime. Go south again. Now we're back to troll territory. Yeah, I didn't play a lot of adventure games growing up that were pure text. Um, but the few that I did play, I do remember it was it was a little hard to keep track of anything. Every you kind of have to visualize things in your head. Sometimes you have to draw out a physical map just so you knew like where things actually were. But uh, you see the large key. Oh well, let's just take the key. You take the large key. All right, now let's go north. I'm surprised we haven't had too many instances where we type something in and. Um, uh, you know, the the game doesn't understand it because these old text-based games are pretty notorious for that. Um, we went key, we went north. Apparently there's a door here. You unlock the heavy rock door with the large key. I didn't even know there was a door there. But we're going to go ahead and open the door. You, heavy, you open the heavy rock door. Thorin says, hurry up! Um, all right, let's go north again then. Oh my god! You know, the art style also kind of reminds me a little bit of Hugo's House of Horrors. That's a game that came out around the Sierra time, but it was by an indie developer, so the production value isn't there as much. It looks more like the graphics, like someone would draw and paint, like what we see here. Like, these are really basic graphics, guys, but, you know, take it for a grain of salt because of the era. Um, you know, they were trying. Anyway, uh, to the south, there's a heavy rock door you see the short, strong sword and the rope. Well, let's take the sword. Let's take the rope. Thorin keeps saying, hurry up. Why are you in a rush? Uh, let's go south. Let's go south. Go southeast. You cannot go south. Go south. Hold on. Go southeast. There we go. You go southeast. You're in Rivendell. I feel like we are traveling large swaths of the country very quickly. Um, wow, okay. I'm just skimming ahead in this walkthrough to see how many commands there are. I don't know. Like, theoretically, we could actually get really far really fast. I guess we'll see. Um, we'll see how this goes. But let's take some time to take in the scenery. Um, I guess nothing is drawn in Rivendell. They ran out of uh, memory here. So it's just a description. Hey, there's Elrond. Isn't that uh, the character that was brought to life by the incomparable Hugo Weaving? Let's talk to him. You talk to Elrond. He says no. Thorin says hurry up. <laughs> Riveting conversation. Um, okay. Give map to Elrond. Apparently he needs this. I don't know how you'd know it. He well, The guy won't say two words to us, but apparently he needs the map. You have the curious map to Elrond. Elrond says... Thank you. Um, okay. Say to Elrond, hello. You talk to Elrond. Okay. Say to Elrond, oh, crap. Say, say to Elrond. Oh, my God. If you make a typo, Elrond... If you make a typo, it uh, it like erases your whole thing if you press backspace. Read. Oh my god. Say to Elrond, read map. There you go. 
what what's happening is if you hold shift and press m it puts a period like you i'm not holding shift for all of this typing even though it's in capitals um i it's just sort of the zx spectrum keyboard you know the old zx spectrum keyboards how it operated that's why i'm making so many typos it's not because i'm uh incompetent i mean not purely but uh, Elrond says hello we're supposed to wait until we get lunch we're a very hungry hobbit say to Elrond hello you talk to Elrond Thorin sits down and starts singing about gold well that's the most Thorin has done uh in a while Thorin sits down and starts singing about gold Elrond says hello Say to Elrond, read map. Elrond says no. All right, well. How about we just try and eat a non-existent lunch? You eat some lunch. Elrond says, hello. <laughs> this is like, have you guys seen on YouTube they make videos of like Oblivion NPC character dialogue and it's just like how mindless and repetitive it is? It's like, it was birthed here, man. Um, all right, peace, Elrond. You're on your own. You go east. You're on a hard and dangerous path in the misty mountains. Visible exits are east, north, west, south. You see nothing. Uh, let's go south. You go south. You are in an arrow path. Visible exits are east and north. You see nothing. Can we get another scene drawn? I feel like you know what. Honestly, it's a bit of a bait and switch. This game was so graphical for like the first four scenes, and it's like nothing. I'm also lost. So we went south. I, I'm looking at the walkthrough. The walkthrough is literally this. East, south, east, north, northwest, north, southeast, down, 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 east. If I don't get that in the right sequence, we are lost, people. So we just went south. I'm going to do this real fast. I'm not even going to read the outcomes. And we want north. And we want northwest. And then we want, oh, northwest. Uh, go northwest. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I screwed something up. Um, where am I? My narrow path. Visible exits are northwest. Go northwest. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, okay. Then we want north. And then we want southeast. And then we want down. We want down. 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 And then we want east. Oh, we're at the golden key. <laughs> I, that felt like putting in the uh, contra code manually. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, you know? Like uh, east, south, east, north, northwest, south, north, southeast, down, 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 east. And then you can type in get golden key. Um, I wish there was more to look at and do. See, the thing with these adventure games is I almost have to play them with a walkthrough because if we were just doing this normally, I would just be so lost and confused, um, especially in this game. This game seems so cryptic. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there, it's sort of like we're just sort of following a list of commands. Like there's... In in some uh, adventure games like this, there's like people to talk to, you know, things to do. I feel like this is a lot of like Thorin is telling me to hurry up, um, and I'm not really doing anything. So we're on a narrow path. Let's go north, I guess, and let's go west, and let's go south, let's go east, not eight, east, and oh, there we go, finally. Well, wow. I assumed every screen was going to be drawn in this game as we played it, but I guess that's not the case. You're in a narrow place with a dreadful drop and a dim view. Uh, we can go north. That's where we want to go. You're in a large, dry cave, which is quite comfortable. There's a small, insignificant crack. Visible exits. Uh, well, that crack seems suspiciously notable, let me tell you. They say that it is nothing. Um, let's just wait. Um, oh, nasty goblins capture you. Was that related to the crack somehow? Or is it just an unrelated incident? Um, to the north, there's a goblin's door. West, there's a window. You see some sand. And Gandalf, hey, 
Hey, oh, talk to Gandalf finally. <laughs> A conversation ensues. You say things, he responds. I mean, they don't even say that. That's like, they just say, you talk to Gandalf. Imagine reading Lord of the Rings as written by the developers of this game. They'd be like, there was a hobbit. He saw things. People said things to him. He went places. Then it ended. It'd be like a five-page book. Well, five sentence, actually. I'm thinking like a kid's book with animations and stuff. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, Thorin sits down and starts singing about gold. Good way to pass the time. Uh, let's just start digging randomly. You dig some sand. In the sand, there's a trap door. Thorin says, hurry up. Smash that trap door. Kick it in. Come on, Gandy. We're getting out of here. You strike the trap door. Um, well, let's do it again. Smash trap door. Let's use Thorin's face. Smash trap door. You strike the trap door. Smash it good. It probably just lifts open, but we're here manually destroying it. Oh. Thorne didn't say hurry up that time. Okay, how about open trap door? Oops. Open. Oh, God. You can't make a single typo. Oh, God. Open trap door. Okay. Smash trap door. Keep kicking it in. I wish there was a repeat. The door is broken. Oh, there's a cure. Hey, Thorin, wait your turn, man. Thorin just went and grabbed the curious key. Say to Thorin, say to Thorin, um, open window with that key. Thorin says, no. Thorin says, this was Thrain's key. Say to Thorin, pick me up. You talk to Thorin. Thorin carries you. Say to Thorin, West. Did, did that work? Now we can go Southwest? <laughs> or Southwest? Go Southwest? Okay, where are we? We're still in the dungeon. All right, there are things... So we tried to say things to Elrond before, and they were not basically accepted by the engine. We need Thorin to open the window. Hold on. Let's see. Um, look at window. Do not know the verb look at. Look window. You going to tell me about the window? Oh, we have to wait for it to draw the whole thing before we realize if it's made a mistake or not. There's some sand, a broken door. There's a goblin's cache. And off the window. Um, okay. Okay, I'm just going to try this. Maybe Thorin is smart enough. Talk to what? Thorin. You talk to Thorin. Thorin, oh, oh my god, it worked! Pick me up. And I want to say that to Thorin. Gandalf goes through the window. Thorin carries you. Oh my god! Hey, we can go back and have lunch. If we could ever find our way back to Alrond, it uh probably quite far away. You talk to Thor and Gandalf enters. Thorin goes west. You're in a dark Hey, we did it! I'm high fiving you guys virtually. Alright, now we want to go southwest to get the heck out of here. Go southwest. Oh yeah, we're in a crazy tunnel now. A big cavern with torches along the walls. The southwest is a goblin's door. Visible exits are down and north east. So, wait, we just went southwest, right? We want to wait until the goblin appears. Is Thorin still carrying us? Curiously. Waiting. Where is this gobbo? Wait, wait. Thorin is very impatient. Thorin sits down and starts singing about gold. This is one move. Okay, I am honestly getting bored of waiting to Thorin. All right, we're just going to go. All right, maybe a goblin appeared. Who knows? Who cares? Um, let's just go north. 
Wait, look. Uh, what are the exits? Exits are down and northeast. Um, wait, we went southwest. How about go northeast? Um, okay. Go southwest, I guess. Um, go north. Let's backtrack. Go south. Oh, God. Where are we? I feel like we're getting lost. Uh, go southeast. There we go. Oh, a goblin captured us, and we're back in the dungeon. Okay. Now we can... I think go north. Uh oh, the the game is running slowly now. Go north. Can I go north? Say, uh, pick me up. Oh, Thorn's not even here. It's just us. Um, can we get out of here? We might be screwed. We somehow got ourselves captured again. Gandalf appears. Go west. We cannot go west. Okay, maybe Thorn will come back. Thorn appears. Say, pick me up. Thorn carries you. Say, west. Thorn. Weird how the other characters are like walking around with us. All right. We got out again. So now we do want to go southwest. Okay, now that we've gone southwest. We need to wait. We need to wait until a goblin appears. He's going to come. I know it. I know he's going to come. Where are we anyway? We're in the big cavern. We're just waiting for the goblin. <laughs> I think we've reached an impassable part of the game think if you want to know the end of the Hobbit story you should pick up the classic original tale by none other than Mr. Jackson and watch the three part epic on your Blu-ray player as it was originally released Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Okay, so clearly we're not... Uh, clearly something's gone awry here. Either we took a wrong step, something's wrong in the walkthrough, who knows. Let's just... Uh, we can go down or northeast. Let's go down, why not? Hideous Goblin enters. Oh, there's a Hideous Goblin. Okay, so now I go north. Um, you're in a dark, stuffy passage. East Goblin enters. All right. Go southeast. And then I go east. And then I uh, get the ring. One ring to control them all. You take the valuable ring. That was easy. Hey, we just stumbled upon the uh, master ring or whatever. North. Okay, I guess we are getting out. So there's, there's a missing step in the walkthrough. We got to go down. That's annoying. Uh, north, south, go northwest, go east. I, I would like to read what's where I am, but I feel like if I read the description, I'll lose where I am in the walkthrough, and then that'll cause problems. Open door, uh, up, close the door behind you. It's good etiquette. East, east. Open curtain. Where are we even? We're, we're standing by a curtain somehow. We ended up out of a goblin jail and now we're like in, in a lady's boudoir. Uh, behind the curtain there's a wall. There's a wall, there's a large cupboard. Okay, so open the cupboard. Let's go to Narnia. Cupboard, there's some food. Take food. Oops, take food. Eat it. Waste not, want not. You eat some food. 
Um, okay. Well, it's good that we're no longer hungry. Go northeast. Oh, hey, here we go. Here's something else to look at. A wall. The gate to Mirkwood. Um, you know, in The Hobbit, isn't the character traveling with like a whole companion, like a whole fellowship? Like, isn't there like 12 or 13 dwarves or something and Gandalf? Something like that, right? Um. Oh. Uh. So, wait. We can... We went northeast. Uh-oh. I'm supposed to go east according to the walkthrough twice. But I can only go west. All right, let's try going west. And west again. No. Okay, let's try going east. Where am I? Um... Go northeast. And then, um, I don't know, south. Um, and then can I go east? Uh, you see a pale bulbous eye staring at you. Ooh, weird. See some pale bulbous eyes staring at you. Am I at a river? I'm back in the dungeon. Oh, I'm in a, an Elven King's dungeon. Oh, I'm totally off the roadmap on this one. Red walls. I don't know how to get out of this. Loxley didn't say anything about this. So, okay, we've clearly... Uh, uh, wait, what happened? Well, hold on. The vicious warg attacks you, but the effort is wasted. Your defense is strong. There's some pale bulbous eyes staring at you. You've mastered 17% of this. I'm dead. Wait, what happened? <laughs> oh, I got killed. Oh, uh, Bilbo Baggins, Jabo Baggins has passed on. Wow. Well, you know what? An, an interesting game. A, an interesting game. Um, uh, you know, The Hobbit is obviously a classic J.R.R. Tolkien novel. Um, it, it, it is so influential. I mean, it helped inspire Dungeons and Dragons, which is the grandfather of all RPGs in one way or another. Um, so truly J.R.R. Tolkien really spawned MMORPGs. You can follow, a, you know, a six degrees of separation to a Warcraft, World of Warcraft. So there you go. Um, I actually never finished reading the book as a kid. I started and I enjoyed it, but then I got the flu halfway through. And when I was staying home from school, I was reading the book while I had the flu. And then when I got better... Every time I opened the book, just the smell of the book made me feel sick again. So I never finished that, the book, actually. And I never saw the Peter Jackson movies because I, after Lord of the Rings, I found them just too much. I don't know. I just, a lot of people like them. I just was never super interested. The Hobbit that I loved was the 1970s cartoon movie Hobbit um, that had like rotoscoped orcs running around uh, if you know what i'm talking about you know if you don't don't go look it up you probably won't like it it's a very acquired taste but my grandma i remember used to rent that for us from a local video store when we were uh vacationing um at uh her uh, cottage in the summers basically but anyway we're super sidetracked the hobbit on zx spectrum here you know putting this in context so many adventure games back in the day in this in this early era, we're so text based. So to have something that's visual like this, I think would have been a selling point and would be quite revolutionary. The downsides to it that I see are this: one, in the effort to visualize things, the the text descriptions of what's going on are very sparse, and I would even say inferior to what you'd get in something like Zork and stuff like that. Although it's been a long time since I played Zork, so maybe Zork isn't as advanced as I remember. But it does sort of seem very bare bones. It's sort of like they put all this effort into the visuals and then the, the text and stuff is all really basic. Like, I'm not... When I read the text, I'm not really being brought into the world of J.R.R. Tolkien. It feels very sort of, you know, bare bones, as I say. Um, the visuals are quite nice. I think if you didn't read the Hobbit book and you tried to play this game, it would just sort of be like not super interesting. But 
if you even know of the book, which most people who'd be playing the game would, I think it would be far more enjoyable. It'd be so cool to be like, oh, look, it's like a little hobbit hole or, oh, it's a goblin's dungeon, like visualized, you know, back when this game came out. Uh, 1982, I guess, is when it, it did come out. Um, the other con I will say is that if you're going to sacrifice the text descriptions in order to visualize things, you got to visualize everything. I mean, I kind of felt like sometimes we were just walking through mountains. I didn't know what was going on. The descriptions are so bare bone. There's nothing to visualize. It kind of gave you nothing. Um, I do think probably the developers didn't visualize every scene for two reasons. One is saves on memory and memory is probably very limited. But two is probably when you're walking through like a little maze area, it takes so long to draw the screen that they probably thought it'd be less annoying for players to not draw every single little screen and only draw the more interesting, bigger, uh, you know, set pieces. So, I mean, if thinking about it like that, I could kind of forgive them for not drawing every scene. But uh, yeah, I think this is a kind of interesting game in the, in the sense of like, would you want to play this today? Only if you're a really hardcore ZX Spectrum fan or only if you're a hardcore Hobbit fan. I don't think the gameplay here necessarily holds up, but I think it has an interesting place in sort of the history of games. And what I'd be really curious to hear about in the comments below are memories from folks who actually played this when it first came out. And, you know, what was it like? Was it cool to actually see this stuff drawn out? Did it sort of seem like a gimmick? Um, if you played a lot of adventure games, like was this your favorite one or was this one like you knew of, but you were, you know, weren't as interested in getting it. I don't know. I don't know. Like how big of a deal was this when it did come out? If you know, hit us up in the comments down below. So not just I learned something, but everybody else does too. And, uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on the game. I don't know. Interesting place in history. I don't think you need to go back and play this. Um, guys, what do you think of The Hobbit here? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, whatever you think of the game, whatever you think of my opinion of the game, hopefully you still had some fun today. Hopefully it was fun watching me fail and get killed by elves or whatever the hell happened there. Um, uh, other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Peace.